So for the corrected item total correlation, uh, the definition is that this is a this is a correlation between uh, this item, that's section one, and the uh, scale score that excludes this item itself. Uh, so we we get a correlation of 0 0.708, and for this one we get uh, 0 0.724 and so on and so forth. Now if uh, we look at the uh, squared multiple correlations you'll get uh, 0 0.51 for the first item and that's actually the uh, correlation of this item with the rest of the items squared and that's something like a coefficient of determination or R, R square. And, and then scale variance if item deleted changes somehow if for example item number three that section three is deleted the variance drops down quite significantly and scale va scale mean if item deleted actually is also uh, is also um, another indication of what changes in your scale if you delete that item for example if you change item four as you see the, the mean score of your scale goes up quite significantly and that means that section four is is probably keeping this uh, the mean score low that means uh, section 4 is a difficult section as you can see from uh, this, this is not the mean score uh, is as you see from the mean statistic that's 2.7 2.78 um, so finally we have got scale statistics where the mean of all numbers all uh, all sections together is 18.2967 that's uh, with the variance of 7 to actually the scale uh, then we have got uh, the scale statistic the variance of the scale statistic is 772.767 and standard deviation and the number of items are also presented now what uh, I would like to add on here is this table uh, I like uh, sorry, this one, this one here, which is uh, which discusses the acceptable range for Cromox Alpha. Actually, there is hardly any acceptable uh, uh, criteria to uh, to uh, make sense of Cromox Alpha output. This is a very useful paper by Tabor in 2016. I'm presenting one of the tables, one of the the figures from this this paper. Uh, as you can see, different authors have interpreted Cromox alpha coefficients in different ways. For example, some people uh, have uh, mentioned that uh, the low index is something around 0 0.11. Uh, and the interesting thing is, uh, for example, the overlap between 19, uh, number 16 and number 15. For example, some people uh, who published papers referred to a wide range between 0 0.45 to 0 0.96 as sufficient, whereas other people uh, um, refer to something that actually that still overlaps uh, partially with uh, the sufficient range. Uh, as that's 0 0.4 to 0 0.55 as none or not satisfactory. Now you can go up and look into the rest of uh, uh, this uh, hierarchy of um, uh, ranges of Cronbox Alpha, but then we have something right in between, something like a median really of of these of this range, and that's relatively high, uh, which uh, has been interpreted as something that falls between 0 0.7 to 0 0.77. Now, uh, um, in applied linguistics, um, there different ranges have been uh, used and have been referred to. One of the ranges that I often see is this, that anything between 0 0.7 to 1 is high and, and between 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 is medium and 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 is low and anything below that is poor and not acceptable. However, if you look at uh, some scholars like Kronbach himself, uh, they propose that uh, if uh, you want to have, if, if you are making high stakes decisions, for example, you're using your scale for cl clinical decisions, it's important that you uh, aim for something around 0 0.9 or in some cases 0 0.8. Therefore, 0 0.7 is like an arbitrary kind of uh, cutoff score that a lot of people still adhere to to the present day. 
um, future uh, in a future video I will discuss other methods of um, investigating reliability and I focus on rush measurement and uh, generalizability theory or or G theory. I've already created a few videos on on rush measurement, but what I have not created is is basically many facets rush measurement, which is a very helpful uh, instrument to help us uh, look into the question of external validity and to some extent internal validity as well. So I have already actually uh, talked about um, talked about this concept, which I wanted to uh, mention again. Where is it? Uh, I think uh, here. I've already talked about these, but I want to just touch on these again once, once more before I finish this video. Um, so if you have an, a low Cronbach's alpha, it might be that you have a narrow construct, or uh, that means you have a few items. You have just a few items in your construct. Uh, if you have a broad construct with many items, chances are higher for you to get a generally high Cronbach alpha and Cronbach alpha is also sensitive to a few other uh, uh, features one of them being the high skewness in the distribution of item correlations basically you can um, estimate the skewness of uh, the distribution of, of uh, item correlations and see if the skewness is high that might be one of the reasons why your Cronbach alpha is low and skewness, uh, sorry, but Cronbach's alpha is also sensitive to the uh, low item discrimination. In uh, classical test theory, we have a concept called D index or item discrimination, which is which if it's below 0 0.3, then uh, you probably will get a lower Cronbach's alpha than if. Uh, your item discrimination were above 0 0.3. Now, I think in some uh, videos in the future, I might be, uh, I, I may discuss uh, a classical test theory in more details. I think that would be helpful. Other uh, factors that can affect Cronbach's alpha include correlated measurement errors, multidimensionality, and unequal fact loadings. Well, th these are not something that I want to discuss today because I think they would probably fall under. Uh, the concept of exploratory fact and uh, confirmatory fact analysis and structural equation modeling. I will make videos for them uh, for sure in the future. But what I, what I would like to add here is that if you have a good Cronbach alpha coefficient value, that doesn't mean that your scale is unidimensional. And if you don't get a a good uh, coefficient alpha, an acceptable uh, coefficient, that doesn't mean that your scale is multidimensional. Uh, you can investigate uni or multidimensionality using confirmatory fact analysis or uh, exploratory fact analysis, which I will cover uh, in future videos. Um, one more thing is if uh, your Cronbach alpha level is small, so what is what does that imply for your scale? Well, that basically means that it doesn't make sense to compute a sum score. So if you, your, uh, let's say, reading test has a low score of 0 0.2 of coefficient alpha, then you cannot add up the scores of your students and, and give them one reading test score because uh, of uh, the poor internal consistency of your test items. Finally, there are other, other available methods of estimating reliability, one of which is hierarchical coefficient omega, which was developed by McDonald's, which I will discuss in a, in a later video. Uh, that will bring me to the end of this video. Um, uh, well, I, I think I have not, sorry, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't talked about this, so just one more thing before I close this video. It's like an advantage of a Cronbach's alpha over uh, over um, earlier methods were, is that uh, it's an average of all possible split half reliabilities because for example in a split half reliability analysis uh, you will need to split your data or your test into two halves now the question is what would be a good half uh, two good halves would it be uh, would you be uh, splitting your your data based on the running order of the items or would you say that you would match uh, even items versus odd items, odd odd and even numbers. 
or do you have a different method for that uh, so that's like a limitation of split half reliability but the thing is with uh, Cronbach alpha you can uh, estimate an average of all possible split half reliabilities and actually uh, circumvents that problem quite easily and finally Cronbach alpha is suitable for for all uh, kinds of items uh, like dichotomous and polytomous data and and uh, this is unlike previous reliability coefficients which were either uh, good for uh, dichotomous items or polytomous items so in in the following video i will discuss cohen's kappa thank you very much for your attention uh, and have a good day